Sonic boom. What's the boom you hear? What's the sound you hear? The last two years I've worked on this book predicting a major global economic boom. My wife thought I was crazy. My editor thought I was crazy. I hope I'm not crazy. Obviously, there are many problems in the world economically, but I, I think a global increase of prosperity is about to happen. I think the developing world especially, which needs it the most, is going to become much better off in the near future. I couldn't get over the fact that you were bringing us these new ideas that actually made the sun shine for one brief second in my afternoon. You said there is no question that there will be double the ideas in the world because women will be participating in full force. As recently as the last generation, most of the world's women had very little ability to participate in science, engineering, business management, the, the administration of governments. That hasn't changed everywhere now, but it is in the process of changing. So this means one to two generations down the road, twice as many people in the world will be contributing to the global supply of ideas. And I think that will lead to a flowering of more progress. You also had a, a, a sentence which really struck me. Fewer people are dying in battle than any time in the history of the planet? Your chance of dying in battle in the last 20 years has been the lowest in human history. Iraq and Afghanistan and the Sudan are terrible exceptions to an overall rule of less combat, fewer deaths from combat, less global military spending. It's been going down for 20 years. The end of the Cold War is one factor. But I think economic interconnectedness is another factor. Nations are now competing for market share more than they're competing for territory. And, and there's lots of things wrong with that. I mean, obviously, our relationship with the Chinese drives us crazy. But it's so much better than military competition that there's just no comparison. Do you say that the manufacturing drought the manufacturing collapse that is hitting America is also hitting China, and that we don't take that into account, that they've got a banana peel in their economy too? Well, see, it's not manufacturing. Manufacturing's up everywhere. It's jobs in manufacturing that are down. And I think this would have happened regardless of the financial panic of recent years. The United States has lost six million manufacturing jobs in the last decade. In the same period, China's lost 28 million because of more efficient forms of manufacturing. More efficient forms of manufacturing are good news for most people. They keep prices down, improve products. They're real bad news if you're a factory worker. So we see this transition away from lots of jobs in factories. It would have happened regardless. The same thing happened in agriculture 100 years ago. 100 years ago, 70% of Americans worked in agriculture. Today, it's 2%. If you told somebody 100 years ago that in the year 2010, 2% of Americans would work in agriculture. They said, oh my God, it's going to be the end of the world. If those manufacturing jobs are shrinking, where do the jobs surface? What's the new? 60% of Americans now work in white collar professions. White collar professions are far from ideal. Many of them are very stressful. Some people don't like being in cubicles like the people behind you at ABC News. Well, maybe they, maybe they like it. They love it. They love it. Okay, they're very happy. If you told your great-grandparents, look, most of your great-grandchildren are going to work in air-conditioned offices. They will not do anything backbreaking or physically dangerous. They will have stressful relationships with their bosses, but they're not going to be working in mines or cutting down trees. Your great-grandparents would have said, that's great. Greg Eastbrook, thank you so much. Good to talk to you. Great. Thank you, John.